recording. Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming we League. This is week 5 of the 2015 season. Oh man, my brain, it's still February. My brain's taking a second to transition into the new year, but I am glad to be here because we have a great match day. Should be a very close, competitive, and hopefully bloody match here uh, between two uh, good teams. On the blue side, it will be Team Epic. Uh, Epic, of course, from Epic Games. They make a lot of really awesome games like Unreal Tournament and Gears of War. Some of my personal favorite games. Uh, and they are playing for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, Doctors Without Borders uh, sends doctors to some of the war-torn regions of the world and uh, developing countries that are facing diseases. Basically, anywhere that's too dangerous for a sane doctor to go. They send a doctor into those areas um, to make sure they can actually get the medical care in those areas, which arguably need it the most in the world. Um, so they're an amazing charity. They do fantastic things. And they are playing against the red team uh, Microsoft One, that is W-O-N, because I love that pun every time. It's great. Uh, Microsoft, of course, uh, infamous uh, software uh, company that made the lovely OS we're running uh, to cast this game today. They are playing for Charity Water. Uh, Charity Water is a uh, charity that tries to build clean water infrastructure in parts of the world that don't have uh, easy access to that clean water. So, I mean, of course, water being the basis for all life and being fairly critical to us humans, that's a great charity and there's a lot of places in the world that, you know, need that base level of access to water we're all familiar with. Um, pictures of people walking for hours and hours every day just to get a uh, small bucket equivalents worth of water to try and live their day off of. So, uh, building that infrastructure in more localized areas really helps improve uh, the quality of life for a lot of people. Um, especially in developing countries. So without further ado though, let's get into the game here. We do have the bands already coming out here. So uh, for the blue side, there were bands of Nidalee, LeBlanc, and Cassidin. Uh, pretty strong bands overall. Cassidin, uh, of course, has hit that point again where it feels like it's a year ago and he's just banned all the time now because people finally got used to the changes and he is still insanely mobile. There was actually in this patch that we're running right now, 5.3, there was a slight nerf to his Q damage, just a flat, I believe it's 10 magic damage nerf, so it's going to be a little bit more tricky for him to farm in lane. He's going to have to take a little bit uh, more risks uh, to go up to auto a little bit more, so I would be... Uh, uh, not surprised to still see this band because that is a very hairline nerf. Um, but uh, it's definitely still a very strong champion. LeBlanc, of course, still insane, even with the item that is deleted for good. Um, she's still absolutely insane. I was expecting a game earlier today. LeBlanc went insane, blowing people up out of bushes uh, without even being so fed. Um, it's just that full combo with her ultimate uh, to repeat one of those moves is insane. Nidalee. Um, a very high priority pick right now in the jungle, uh, especially now with her traps actually rooting uh, the monster, she's able to clear the jungle a lot more efficiently. Um, those spears have, again, reverted to the uh, spears of yore <laughs> that just chunk out a third, a half of your health in the later game. Um, and looking at the bands for the red side, we do see uh, it's Janna, Jarvan, and Maokai. Um, again, some really strong bands overall. The Jarvan uh, band is actually probably a target band, but unfortunately uh, for this Microsoft One team, the uh, Jarvan player, uh, who uh, frequently uh, gets that band against him, um, was able to pick first pick his Vi, um, possibly putting him in the first pick position specifically to make sure um, that he can snag that Vi, uh, being how likely he is to continue to get that J4 ban against him. Um, but overall, looking at how these comps are shaping out, we do see uh, that Lissandra actually making it pretty deep into the draft here, and we might uh, possibly be seeing this Vladimir coming out um, for uh, top lane Vlad into that Lissandra, able to try and pull away from some of that harassment damage. Um, or if she goes all in for a gank, try and pull away uh, before she can lock him down with that ultimate. Um, though, of course, 
we have seen some uh, Morgana play into this top lane again uh, with the rise of all the AP top laners that Black Shield um, also good of course for the CC which pretty much all top laners focus on having a good amount of um, Morgana able to push in uh, those waves a lot faster with them being typically AP uh, it's a lot harder to farm under turret in the top lane so Morgana though becoming more and more frequent uh, frequently, I should say, a top lane pick. It looks like uh, that will be Vlad going into the top lane and Morgana's support. Um, with, of course, we gotta talk about, take about uh, the Callista ADC, so that's gonna be great. <laughs> Just beautiful champ to watch. We do see um, Graves, of course, coming out for the uh, ADC on the red side here. Uh, and it looks like it might be Nocturne to finish out. Um, I'll be interested to see which one of those uh, two gets sent mid. Most likely Pantheon. Um, at least for myself personally, I see Pantheon, Pantheon in the mid lane. Though uh, this is, of course, assuming that that is in fact a Lissandra top. Lissandra, of course, um, if you go for a more uh, just standard mage style with her she certainly brings quite a bit of a punch uh, the reason we see her in the top lane so frequently nowadays is because um she it's just so good to build utility items on her like that zonia's um that you typically don't uh you want her to be an engagement tool not necessarily uh somebody trying to blow people up and assassinate them and with uh, aside from of course her uh harassment um, option. There is not very much consistent damage that she does have fairly high cooldown so she's less standard in the middle lane but it looks like we will get a treat here with that Lissandra in the middle lane since we do have that Nocturne going top with the teleport so be on the lookout for um, once we see some uh, uh, level 6 coming from this red side uh, the uh, pylon into the mid lane with that Nocturne um, ultimate to the mid lane, uh, Lissandra throwing down her ultimate to lock down Ari to make sure she can't get away. Nocturne using that ultimate to gap close right into that mid lane and starting the fear leash onto her. So as soon as she comes out of the Lissandra ultimate, she will still be CC'd with that fear. Um, should be able to absolutely destroy her even without Pantheon joining in as well. Though of course, if they want to go ultimate Wombo into this mid lane... Um, they can of course do so with that Pantheon ultimate from the jungle here. But, uh, looking just at the bottom lanes right now, we do have, uh, Graves and Thrush, a very strong, um, bottom lane for this red side. Um, Graves, of course, become a very standard meta pick at this point in time, just because he has so much just raw attack damage, um, that he is able to really just blow people up and Thresh of course very very much facilitates that it's gonna be a little bit tricky um, with the Callista um, because she is just such a highly mobile AD carry with that jump um, and on top of that Morgana bringing in that black shield um, to cancel out any of the CC that Thresh will try to bring for an engagement um, assuming she is able to throw down that black shield uh, before a flay before a hook um, that should make it for a fairly safe uh, bottom lane here for this blue side despite that uh, very heavy threat that uh, Thresh and Graves uh, do bring throughout the laning phase. Looking at the matchup uh, into this top lane here, two less uh, standard uh, uh, picks that we do see for the top lane here, of course that Nocturne we talked about earlier, uh, but also the Vladimir. Vladimir um, is, I guess, fitting into the typical uh, change to the meta here where we do have a lot of AP top laners. So that is nice uh, to see a, a different flavor here uh, with the Vladimir. I have a good friend of mine of mains Vladimir top end. Uh, with the, if you use that ability right, of course, starting off with that uh, spell vamp item, you are able to just completely out sustain anyone you're training against, even if uh, Nocturne goes with the typical. Uh, Blade of the Ruin King first build, um, we should probably see Vladimir out sustaining even a Nocturne uh, with his passive that is the AoE auto attack which uh, does proc that uh, lifesteal. So um, we should be keeping an eye out for perhaps not immediately in the top lane but once both of these uh, top laners have gone back and completed uh, their first tier items um, 
we should see a lot of trading uh, coming out from this Vladimir. Um, as he should be able to sustain far stronger than Nocturne. Even in the early game, I would venture to say. Um, it depends on how aggressively you do have uh, your play style with Vladimir. But if this is an aggressive Vladimir, uh, we will see a lot of trading coming out from the early game. Um, even in getting in Nocturne's face, as Nocturne is a melee auto attacker, uh, hopefully Vladimir will be able to dodge out of a large portion of that damage. But um, even if uh, Nocturne does manage to get in the face of Vladimir, um, Vlad will probably be able to sustain through that damage a lot better than Nocturne. Nocturne probably going to have to chug through pots a lot more. Um, maybe even consider starting Flask. That's feels wrong to say, but I'm just so concerned about this Vladimir damage, and you're going to want to um, avoid that harassment as much as possible, which you will be able to bring out to you. Um, so you might want to uh, consider going with that uh, flask, just so you can use your abilities to try and farm out a little bit more here. And we do see that will be Morgana taking taking the pact <laughs> um, with Callista here. So, um, Morgana, of course, not uh, the best person you want to throw into um, uh, the middle of a team, given how squishy she is early, but if we do see uh, that Morgana rushing uh, for a uh, uh, Zonia's Hourglass, that would actually be a great combination. Throw her right into the middle of a team, have her start her ultimate, immediately Zonia's before she can get blown up. Um, and, uh, I mean, that would be a, <laughs> one of the strongest ways to start an engagement off in the game, uh, I would venture to say. So we do see Blue Side looking for a little counter uh, invade here, um, or answer to a perceived uh, invade start on this bottom side so they are they did give up complete vision here seeing that pantheon in the middle lane um, might give them a clue that it's a little safe for Vlad to venture into the blue side of their jungle but they did give up uh, all that initial vision pile into this <laughs> bottom tri bush here um, but as Vladimir does scope around that blue jungle you will see that it is safe it is clear so they will be all right here and it looks like we're gonna have both sides Starting Krugs, it seems. Unless if... Oh, no. So pardon me, that is Pantheon jungle, of course. What, what am I saying, thinking there's a Nocturne jungle? Silly me. Yes, we will have both sides uh, jungle starting on the bottom side of the map here. Uh, Pantheon starting with the Gromp. Uh, Vi starting with those Krugs. We do see uh, fairly strong leashes for both teams here. Gonna get their uh, starts in the jungle pretty uh, nicely here. Should be able to farm up through those uh, early jungles pretty solidly. Um, with the new jungle, of course, it's getting trickier and trickier to get a good start. Great point blank Q onto the Thresh while he can't answer. Uh, I believe his cooldown was up during that, and it, uh, it's, it's back now, but it might have been up during that. So great. Uh, move there by the Morgana just walk up and point blank Q again hitting the graves Thresh actually able to answer with the flay this time though, so they were able to trade a little bit of damage back But that is some good trades overall coming out for this bot lane to start it off here Looks like there is a level two for both sides, so there's not gonna be any super strong shenaniganry going on Glad even with the boots not able to dodge out of that claw as it was coming out of the fog of war in those bushes just yet as we do see that sustain coming out from the Vlad, even without his item starting boots first, uh, is able to take quite a bit of sustain. But Nocturne going in hard with that fear, getting quite a lot of auto damage onto that Vlad. Gonna have to chug through those pots. Uh, but since he did go boots uh, first item, uh, he was able to get five health pots, so he should be alright there. Beautiful. Ren farming there. Oh, it always feels so satisfying to see that. Looks like we're having a fairly calm match in the mid lane, identical CS there. Uh, with the harassment that's going on in the top lane, Nocturne is out farming that Vladimir a little bit in this early game with a 5 CS lead already. Uh, but we'll see what that develops into here as we see. Getting aggressive on that Morgana. Lucky she didn't throw out that Q a little bit sooner, otherwise I could have spelt Doom there for that Graves who's right in the face of that Morgana into that bush. Vi able to go ahead and clear through that jungle. 
uh, get that blue buff without going back. I'm gonna actually try and get that Gromp as well, as her smite will be up in time for that Gromp, I do believe. We see some more delicious farming here in the bottom lane. Great Q again! Had to take a little damage into the face for it did Morgana, but she was able to lock him down and get quite a bit of damage. The Ren doing quite a bit of damage to both, uh, but we do see that Pantheon in this bottom lane coming in. So that is a three-man gank, and that Thresh starting off with a point-blank Q in the face. The heal going to be enough to get Morgana out of there. But will this be the kill? One more, yes, that is with the rend. First blood going over to Callista. She is not able to finish off with the flash on to Morgana. Not going to be quite enough. <laughs> A lot of action here in this bottom lane to start us off. Morgana barely making out of there with the summoner heal <laughs> to vank entirely there. Vi now in the bottom lane, uh, but that was one for one. Even in a 2v3 with First Blood going over to this Callista, not the start you want to see from the red side here. Uh, and it looks like Callista will be going for um, uh, Runon's first. Great damage there onto this uh, Lissandra in the middle lane from Ari. Not going to be quite enough to finish her off, but that will be forcing Lissandra to go back right now. Actually, it looks like Lissandra is going to be hanging around in that middle lane. A little bit longer. Living a little dangerously here as we see Vi starting to move into position here. Perhaps she wants a little bit more gold to get a better buy uh, when she goes back for that first item. It looks like she did have a health pot to chug through, so she's actually probably going to be alright. But we do see Pantheon and Vi looking to make a gank in this mid lane here. Vi actually going to be the first to back off, and we do have Pantheon coming in. That is the ultimate, and the ultimate from Nocturne as well, and that is exactly the combo we talked about during the draft phase. Absolutely able to blow up that squishy mid laner in Ari. So that is, for the mid lane, uh, a little bit of help going over to this Lissandra here. The kill did go on to that Pantheon, as we see the... Uh, the Callista getting aggressive here in the bottom lane with those hops. Always feels so good to just watch her move. Oh, I, I, I don't mean to annoy people who aren't Callista fans, but you gotta admit that smooth animation just feels so good inside. <laughs> um, great Q shot. These are heat seeking Qs on this Morgana. I don't think I've seen her miss a Q shot uh, but once in this game. As we see more spooky ghosts being sent out to patrol out, make sure there's no ganks coming in for a little extra vision. Uh, one of the best reasons we see Callista played um, frequently allowing her to have control of that uh, vision, even when the wards are down uh, in the early phases as they are now. Actually getting hooked as the Morgana wasn't able to black shield herself even in time for the play. So not much damage blocked out there by the black shield. Um, and it looks like Vi's actually going to go back to get her Krugs, so uh, not even setting up for a uh, gank here. But she does have some health pots, so she will chug through those pots uh, and be quite alright here. Interestingly, uh, not going for the biscuits uh, on her masteries. Great charm onto this Lissandra in the middle lane. As we look back here in the bottom lane. And great black shield there. That's the black shield we were waiting for to see that hook being uh, blocked out. But that was a lot of damage on uh, to that Callista in the bottom lane here. Let's try and keep our eyes here in this bottom lane as we do see Vi starting. And with that Q charge, there she is. Gonna be able to knock it out of there with the flay. No, that will be with the Ren stack scene call down. But the Pantheon gonna ult in. Now actually going to think better of it. Quite a bit of damage again onto that Callista, but with the mobility, with the Vice CC to get people off of her, with the Morgana Black Shield uh, to continue to get those clutch Black Shields and prevent any CC onto her, the Red Side going to think better of it in this point um, and let that be a kill over to this Callista again. So two uh, and one now is this Callista. Uh, I'm going to go back to try and get uh, that Rudons, I believe. She will have enough for that purchase here. As we see 
Lissandra setting up for the gank. They do know that this ward is here, so there she is into this lane, and with that, Vlad thought he was having a favorable trade here, just pulling right before the end of his life, and with the flash in the pool, great play by Vlad to get out of there. Gonna just chug through some health pots now that he does have his spell vamp and try and sustain through this, but absolutely uh, great play with that flash coming out of the pool there for Vladimir to get out of that situation. Should have been by all rights a kill there, um, but just expert play from this Vladimir into the top lane. And now with that uh, Rudon's finish, we're going to see some runs forever <laughs> in this bottom lane. Um, is already missing out on just a little bit of CS in that middle lane because that Lissandra is able to now just shove that wave as hard as she can uh, with that blue buff onto her. And we see Nocturne actually just going to ult into the top lane actually with the fear. Going to make it so Vlad can't get away with the trail from the Q. Uh... Uh, Nocturne is, of course, able to keep up with that Vladimir. Great hook onto the Callista. The flame is going to be black shielded out there, but with the binding and the ultimate from Morgana, that will be enough damage with one auto attack in, and that will be a kill on the Thresh again. Going over to this bottom lane, taking a little bit of turret shots here, so they're going to want to be a little careful backing away there, making sure there's no Pantheon l lurking about, but with the great ward coverage they do have, Looking at the minimap really quickly, they're fairly confident that there is no sneaky pantheon looming about. And with Vi even throwing out another ward there, they're going to feel even safer, able to push out this bottom lane. Oops. We do see Vi looking to try and set something up on this Lissandra again, and actually jumping that uh, claw a little quickly. Great charm, going to get some more damage onto that Lissandra. Um, but not going to be enough, uh, of course, to get out of there. Great ultimate onto herself to block out, uh, the damage from that Vike ultimate of the Assault and Battery. And it looks like with sending that Lissandra back, they're going to look to start off this dragon here. Actually going to choose to ignore the crab. Um, maybe throw down the pink ward to make sure there's no sneaky vision hanging about here. And it looks like that will be the first dragon of the game going over to this blue side. Great call there with people from the red side just now getting back uh, into position to contest. They uh, had a really good call there to actually make sure if I can actually rotate my camera to the right person here. Uh, to make sure that they were able to snag that dragon uncontested while the uh, majority of the red side was uh, back shopping uh, and healing even <laughs> from that uh, damage they had taken. Still great wave clear here from this Ari. Um, in this middle lane as we see Lissandra just trying to farm out a little bit. Ari actually going to spirit rush in and that looks like it might be enough damage here. Lissandra goes down with that uh, the tomb not available to her. Uh, even with that chalice completed, not enough uh, MR to hold out from that all in from the Ari. And that is a kill onto this Ari now. So we will see her start to become a bit of a nightmare here. Because that Ari is certainly something you don't want to see uh, getting going here. And with that kill, that will be enough uh, to go back and complete a Morella Nomicom. I do believe is going to be the purchase there. Yes, I'm already going to buy that. I'm going to grab a pink ward as well. We do see a lot of good vision um, coming out from this red side here uh, upon the line of scrimmage here. Pantheon trying to get the last bit of that, so there is a, uh, now that those wards, deep wards have expired from the red side jungle, um, it might be the time to try and capitalize on that lack of vision for the red side and try and get some of that momentum swinging back in their favor as there already is a 2k plus gold lead right now to this red side and we're gonna actually see Vi gonna try and queue in and get a little aggressive but she did not know that Lissandra was there, gonna be safe to turn back around. And with that tomb that's going to set up for this engagement here, Vi going to be going down to start this off, but Lissandra's so low she's going to go down almost instantly too. And great hook on the Thresh, but not necessarily the fight he wants to pick with that Callista going down now though, because Nocturne was able to ult in. Actually, great judgment call there. Uh, great team coordination there to know that 
Nocturne was ready, in range to ult in. Q, uh, taking the Q ride, did Thresh uh, into that to get a little extra damage, a little extra CC in, to make sure that Team 5 went in their way. And overall, uh, that is a 2 for 2, I believe, uh, in the grand scheme of things, or a 1 for 1. Now, I believe it was a 2 for 2. Um, so not necessarily uh, getting anything out overtly in Red Side's favor, but of course, closing that gap a little bit as there's more gold to go around the gold differential that they are uh, falling behind a little bit of this blue side here means a little bit less with each one of those even trades they get. As we do see by clearing out her red buff here as Ari tries to put in a little bit of damage onto this mid turret. It looks like she might actually be able to get it here and yes that will be the middle turret going down so that is uh, two turrets to none right now in favor of this blue side and critically they are um, the including the middle lane turret now so top lane of less consequence in the early stages of this game though it does free up that vladimir to try and roam around and threaten uh some plays here you see a pink board being cleared out here by this pantheon Now that is all three turrets down uh, in favor of this blue side here. Uh, with that bottom turret now falling as well. So with the entire ring of outer turrets gone and great aggressive ward placement there. So they will get the timer on this red buff here when Pantheon does take it. Uh, and he even in fact uh, has to worry about a possible steal attempt. So going to play a little uh, cautiously around there calling Lissandra over uh, for a little cover there in the area. But yes, with that outer ring of turrets down and blue side, uh, blue side's turrets still being untouched at this point, uh, they're able to push forward like this uh, with this Morgana here and try and aggressively ward a little bit deeper. But it looks like, no, they're going to just go into this fight here. Lissandra actually going to flash, but goes right into that Vi ultimate, and she's going to go down, and that actually will be also the Pantheon going down. That was enough damage since all five of them were there. So that will be two for nothing, and this middle lane turret going in favor of the blue side. And just like that, we see the gold leaf increasing astronomically up to 7,000 gold. Definitely not what you wanted to have happen here. Oh, actually going to miss that ward ever so slightly. Um, but they are going to spot out this pink ward here to clear out a little bit of vision. And get the scuttle crab so it will be up. In time for this dragon here. Um, but yeah, absolutely uh, not what you wanted to have happen as, as this red side. Of course, Nocturne, uh, quite the split pushing threat, especially uh, since the majority of the kills, uh, three kills are onto that Nocturne. He will be able uh, to split push very effectively and take down turrets uh, very quickly here. But that's um, not what you wanted to see uh, as a way to start off this game here for the blue side. Uh, assuming you are the red side, that's not what you wanted to see. Uh, because with the Vi, with the Organa, uh, with the Ari Charm, there's a lot of ways, and with the Callista Ultimate, there's a lot of ways to catch people out and get picks. So with that Ring of Turrets down, you're losing that vision uh, to the blue side, slowly creeping deeper and deeper into your jungle. And as we see, Pantheon here, trying to clear it out, isn't able to even get uh, safely enough towards this dragon to try and contest it, just barely throwing down uh, a single ward for vision to see it being taken away uh, is the red side. Ari going to get a little aggressive here, actually going to be instantly queued to stop that engagement, but going to be caught out is Callista, so that will be a kill uh, to start this off going over to the red side, and going to go down to the Vladimir, Vladimir ultimate is Pantheon, but we see Morgana getting answered on, and that will also be thanks to the fear of this Vi going down as well. And Lissandra not able to save uh, Thresh in time, but will get the answer kill. And taking it a little bit aggressive, but able to tank up that turret shot is the red side. So overall, that is an ace <laughs> for the red team here. Just when I start to say they're getting a little uh, out trade here, all of a sudden they get an ace of 5 for 2. Overall, for in favor of this red side here, and they will also get the middle turret off that. So while they did miss out on the dragon, and that is... 
uh, two important dragons over to this blue side. That was a great skirmish afterwards. Blue side perhaps getting a little bit overconfident after taking that second dragon uncontested, uh, trying to press their advantage, look for a pick into the jungle, but just got a little bit uh, too disgrouped there with Ari going so far forward to start that out. Um, and part of their team uh, on the opposite sides of the red side's blue buff. They were not grouped properly to try and capitalize on those picks, and in fact, uh, that gave it, that lended itself to the red side, who certainly has a lot of damage potential themselves, um, and pick potential if they get a good uh, engagement, and with uh, the five kill Callista getting killed right at the start of that engagement, um, <laughs> Pantheon actually going to be pushed away, trying to take that crab, not going to be allowed to, and going to have his ward stolen away um, by the Ari. But yeah, I mean, certainly if they can continue to take out that Callista right at the start of the engagements here, uh, that's going to be what they need to do, um, as Callista is uh, carrying the majority of the kills, um, or nearly the majority of the kills for her team here. Um, as they look to try and steal away this blue buff here, Ari actually going to Spirit Rush right into the face of Lissandra, who has to throw down the ultimate on herself and not going to be enough to survive. But there is an engagement happening here with that Callista, able to just... Oh, disgustingly throw her autos into everyone's face. They were too grouped up and not able to get on the Callista. If you group up like that within auto range of the Callista and are not CCing the Callista, are not blowing her up immediately, she's going to be able to just auto away and then rend all of you. And just to throw it back to that really quickly, let's watch the Callista uh, from the start of that engagement really quickly here. It looks like they were trying to contest this blue buff here. Uh, from being stolen away and let's focus on the Callista throughout this whole fight here as we see her coming in Already throwing quite a bit of stacks onto the tanky thrush and as she just moves in forward That's more stacks another wave another wave and then the Ren getting absolutely insane damage uh, onto that team there oh and even I <laughs> I mean even if they had gotten the blue buff away, that's not uh, that's a trap you gotta avoid. You can't just contest an objective, even especially a minor objective like a blue buff, uh, if it's gonna mean you're going to go into a uh, bad engagement like that, especially into the fed Callista. Um, as the major threat for this blue side, the red team has to make sure that they start avoiding that Callista's engagements at all costs here. And with that BF sword completed, that's gonna be um, a lot of damage onto this turret, not um, quite enough to take it down. Even with this minion wave here, I believe that will be enough uh, of a presence from the Thresh to force them away. Great Q. Again, Morgana have been very on point this game with those Qs. Um, and with a lot of uh, AP damage as well, um, they're becoming more and more painful to take to the face um, regardless. Uh, of the CC effects and we do see Pantheon smiting on those wolves to try and get a little extra vision with that invulnerable little ghosty just to continue to try and carry on these vision wars and get their side of the jungle back um, as we do see after this back um, the vision has essentially been reset um, a couple of deep wards uh, giving blue side vision now um, but largely the vision has been reset so if the Red Side can continue to try and extend vision of their own, which is sort of a critical story right now. As we see, as they're getting pushed away with their uh, turrets going down, and remember the middle lane uh, inner turret is down as well. So they're being sort of forced here to try and ward within their own jungle as much as possible, and that's giving all this freedom um, of the Fog of War over to this blue side here. So in a situation like this, I would like to see um, possibly Pantheon uh, going for that sight stone here. Um, probably now it looks like he's going to try and continue to uh, just push forward uh, and get that uh, ruby crystal upgraded into a giant spell rather than a sight stone. But with how critical these vision wars are being and the fact that there's only one warding trinket left uh, for this red side, um, even with the amount of wards they're trying to buy, I would still like to see just some guaranteed wards coming out. Um, from the Pantheon, and as we see, uh, it is in fact, oh, Thresh just barely missing the Q there, um, but it is in fact a Randuin's Omen, uh, upgraded from that, uh, Ruby Sightstone, or Ruby Crystal, um, so, 
We're not going to see as much vision uh, coming from this red side, but I mean, it's at a point where great Q dodge there from the Calista, but the ultimate going to be uh, tuned out of actually great play from the uh, Lissandra, even though she does end up going down to that run. Calista being focused out there, great shot from the Graves and uh, ultimating in from the Nocturne on the right target there to grab and this uh, might not be the engagement they want with the Vladimir. No, they're going to take the Thrush. They're going to take the Pantheon. And that actually is going to be enough damage from the Vladimir and the Ari. Again, certainly the Vladimir and the Ari bringing quite a lot of damage. And with both of them having two uh, full items completed here, uh, even with the Callista no longer in play, that was enough damage uh, to continue to trade effectively there. And overall, um, what looked like it might have gone in favor of the red side turns out being a 3 for 3. Um, again, overall, I mean, you, you want to keep seeing even trade trades if you're the red side here. Um, but, I mean, the further this gets into the late game, the harder that's going to be to deal with. So, as we see, Vi over here going to be able to smite away this dragon uh, uncontested since there is no smite available. Um, they're going to just try and get a pick onto that already. Actually getting a lot of damage, but the Zonias will allow the, her team to... Uh, hustle around here and make sure she's safe and that Vi actually trying to 1v1 a Nocturne here gonna be able to do so but we see Callista absolutely dodging all the skill shots here and that will be the Callista jumping over the wall even with that flash heal able to get away a 3 for 1 it seems uh, with only the Vi going down that probably will be the Sandra going down as soon as that times out as well gonna try and uh, turn on that Ari but that will not be enough so an ace uh, an extended ace coming out for the blue side here. And, you know, I mean, if you're continuing to trade evenly, that's one thing. But when, when <laughs> as we see the BM coming from that Callista, um, when we start to see uh, those trades continue to happen, of course, it does even up the gold for both sides. But if that allows one side who's ahead to hit some key item breaks here, which we do see with the Callista, with that uh, Bork, with that Bloodthirster, and uh, the Runons, all finished up here um, accelerating the game is sort of a side consequence of trying to uh, make the gold differential less overall in scope because then this happens <laughs> then they might hit an, a crucial item break before you and be able to uh, create an engagement that's just so outrageously in their favor um, that now the game has absolutely spiraled out of control there's gonna have to be very conservative turtle play coming in um, from this red side here. I'd say you know, even as far as being out um, on this river is not something they'd want to risk. Um, these wards from Thresh probably being inconsequential really in the uh, final estimation here um, on this river because that's not where red side's going to want to fight. They're going to want to look for picks elsewhere um, where they can get them. And I mean, we, we got to remember that if, again, blue side does get cocky like after that second dragon and uh, gets out of position a little bit, uh, I mean, this is a Pantheon uh, uh, Lissandra team uh, that can just lock you down and a Thresh, which can just lock you down for absurd amounts of times, let alone the other CC that they can provide um, from the rest of their team that just... Lockdown CC is going to be impossible to deal with. Vlad going to have to pull away here, but that is going to be the rest of his team coming, so he will be all right here making out Pantheon. Going to ult in just to try and prevent this turret from going down, but the Spirit Rush from Ari actually not going to land. That will be the turret going down in favor uh, of the blue side, though, and that is every uh, inner turret now gone down as well. And the now 11k gold lead in favor of the blue side probably going to result here as the mini waves are so pushed up in this baron um, there is a ward on it so they will see it if it's started off here they do see the pings coming out um, as it is swept away we'll have to see I mean there's a lot of wards being left behind in red sides jungle so they're gonna have to continue to sweep it out like they are uh, if they want to make sure they're not seen trying to contest this baron but at this point I mean well, what is there really to do when you're in a 10k lead? You gotta, if, if they're gonna try and just out-rotate you now, threatening you in your own jungle, um, you're gonna have to try a, a last-ditch uh, effort uh, contesting an objective here. 
I mean, remember, there's three dragons onto this uh, blue side. In addition to that gold lean, in addition to that kill distribution onto their carries, um, with those uh, um, three dragons there uh, that are unanswered, most importantly, unanswered by the red side without even a single dragon to their name, um, you know, that increased mobility is just going to make their pick potential even stronger here uh, as we continue to go further in the game. As, uh, we see great uh, movements here from the blue side sticking together very closely here um, uh, to just throw out a little bit of ward coverage, not straying too far from the team. So if that pick does happen, the team can answer uh, fairly quickly here. And red trying to reclaim what amount of their jungle they can, um, but as soon as they throw down those pink wards, they're getting cleaned up. It's it just hurts your soul. It's so demoralizing to throw down that 100 gold investment and then immediately have it uh, picked up for 30 gold by the enemy team. It hurts, but, I mean, it's what you have to do at this point in the game. Um, as they will know where this blue side is as they continue to lose uh, that vision control with uh, those three sweepers available to them. And that Callista wave clear. Now that she has the rune on, uh, doesn't even need Ari to participate in that wave clear. And they're sending Vladimir in the bottom lane to uh, split the push here. Oh, good shot onto the uh, Lissandra there. And she does actually have the face of the mountain put on her just to make sure she doesn't die. Um, good safe play there, but that will mean a good hook onto Vi, though, with the black shield. No, gonna prevent any CC from coming onto this Vi. And she is able to get an ultimate onto a critical person, but we do see Nocturne diving in, and that is two kills. Three kills, no, four, not an ace, and the ignite is not enough with 15 hit points. That is a 5 for 0 ace to finish out the game in favor of this blue team here with the style points on that Zonia's at the end. That will for sure be the game going over to Epic here in an outstanding play here as we see more Zonia's coming out for style points. Strong game here, a very hotly contested game in the early game, but with those early kills on to Callista, she ended up just spiraling out of control. And overall, once we saw Vlad get past uh, that early game, uh, he was able to ramp up very nicely as well. And a Vlad, well, that 7, 2, and 8 is not a Vlad that you can trade with. So overall, very strong showing from the red side, but this was a game that just got out of hand for them and ended up going in favor of the epic team here as we look fairly closely here or uh really quickly here i should say um just overall at the damage uh we see remember <laughs> that vladimir did as like negligibly a difference so as much damage as that callista did um so despite all those flashy callista plays um the vladimir putting in a lot of consistent damage on a lot of targets as we I uh, do see the 8 assists there as well. He was involved in a lot of the kills for this blue team. Um, is probably the silent story of the game. Um, so, I mean, great showing from both teams here. Unfortunately, I did just spiral a little bit out of control in favor of this blue side. But definitely going to be uh, both be teams to be reckoned with uh, going forward. And we'll possibly be seeing against this epic team in the future a lot of bands coming out against that Callista who just went insane today. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Um, if you want to continue to see uh, games from the After Hours Gaming League, you can, of course, go to their website, the After Hours Gaming League website, uh, and they will be posting all the schedules up there for any upcoming games. Uh, and if you want to stay tuned to specifically games I'm casting because I'm just such a lovely caster. Feel free to subscribe to this channel. All games will be posted after they are cast. And now it seems like I'm finally able to do um, some live streaming capabilities. So I will be live streaming all the games I cast throughout the rest of the day today. And hopefully the weeks in the future. So uh, thanks for watching.